everybody. It's Connie Stewart with simplysimplestamping.com. So glad you guys could stop by. It's time for another Tuesday tip video, the masterclass for June 2022 are some great hack ideas. We love hack ideas, right? So we've talked about uh, we talked about cutting using our die cutters. We've talked about dry embossing, and today we're going to talk craft punch hacks. I've got some fun tips and tricks that will take your punches well beyond what you typically use them for. I'm really excited to share these with you, so let's get started. Okay, so let's get started with my very first tip, and that is what do you do if you have a, a punch that has gotten stuck? It can happen, right? You're trying to punch and it's like, nope, it's not going anywhere. Or uh, maybe you've got it locked, you unlock it, and it just won't come undone. These things can happen. I uh, just want to tell you, everything inside of Stampin' Up's punches, all of this is metal in here. And you can pick up little burrs and things. Things can happen, right? So if you get a punch that has gotten stuck, this is my tip. You are going to gently drop it on your table or just give it a good hard smack like that on the table. A lot of times that will release it. I've also been known to drop it onto my carpeted floor. Just give it a good drop, um, and a lot of times that'll help release whatever has kind of gotten stuck in there. I actually have used that tip several times, and you guys have told me it's helped you as well. Now, I want to flip my punch over here because this is just a good uh, opportunity for me to share a little bit about our punches. This is a punch that is open. When you close it, you can push that lever, and it is now locked. That means when it's laying there, um, on your shelf or um, in a cubby or wherever you keep them, you can see exactly what punches it is because there's an image right there. So all you have to do to uh, start punching is to hold onto your punch with both hands, with your thumbs, release that little lever, and now you're ready to punch. So there's your tip on how to release a stuck punch. Here's one that's happened to me too many times. So I had the perfect size scrap for uh, my, my image. And oh, oh, I can't, I don't have anything to hold on to. Have you ever had that happen? Well, I'm gonna share a fun tip with you. I keep little scraps of cardstock. This is what I use, all those little scraps either that I've cut off or maybe a card that went awry, it happens. These are just little half inch pieces. So I'm going to press a mini glue dot onto uh, one of my little handles here. Um, it's right there. You might even want to destickify it by touching it a few times just to make sure you're good. I'm going to take my oh so small piece of cardstock and I'm going to press it on there. And look at that. I've got a handle now. I can use that to slide my image center it up. See how I can um, move that around, which actually brings me to one of my little bonus tips. Always use your punches upside down because this allows you to see right where you're punching. You have the opportunity to move this around. When you get it centered right where you want it, give it a press. And look, yes, I did cut through my little, um, my little handle here. Not a problem. I'm just going to keep reusing it until it's just a little too small but I have a million and one little pieces of scrap. So great way to use up those pieces. Like I said, a card that didn't go quite right. Go ahead and cut up those into some uh, little, these are about three inches by half an inch. Great way to create a handle for extra small cardstock. This tip also works really well with the pickup punches. Now these are the ones that make little decorative ends to your cardstock. And inside here, you uh, have three different sizes. You have a half inch, three quarters, and one inch. So depending on the size of your cardstock, it'll just slide right into those grooves, helping you to get centered. But what do you do if you have a tiny, just a tiny little image? So I wanted to say hugs. So my tip when you're doing this same thing, uh, we're going to take this tag right here. So I'm going to slide that in. It's in between the grooves. My other tip, honestly, with the uh, pick up punches is to go ahead and flip it over and make sure you're good and centered. We're going to go ahead and give that its first punch. Now we can come in with our ink pad and our stamp that we want to stamp. We're going to say hugs right here. 
And you might go, yeah, I have no idea how to go about cutting that other end. I'm going to take that little leftover piece when we punch this end, and I'm simply just going to lay it here. I'm only using it kind of as a visual so I see exactly where I want to cut. Again, it's not going to be rocket science. We just want to come close. So we're going to trim that down. Now, to punch the other side, here's my dilemma. I'm going to slide it in there, and I'm like, oh, no, I don't have anything to hold on to. So my little makeshift handle to the rescue. So I'm going to put that here on this opposite side, and now I've got a nice long strip. I'm going to slide that into my punch. Remember, we're going to flip it over make sure it's centered then you can remove that handle and look at that guys we now have a little tiny uh sentiment that i did there with my pick a punches so another really fun tip on using those little handmade handles so here's a tip i've got a little piece of card stock here i just stamped sweet friends but oh i really wanted this to be a tag well Here's a tip on how to take the essentials tag, which is pretty short. I'm going to show you how you're going to lengthen it. The first thing you want to do is make sure that your measurement is the same size here as your punch. So in this case, I believe it is a one and five eighths. And I want you to see that instead of going straight in, I'm going to lift this up and out of my punch like that. I can line that up. Do you see what I'm doing there? This is hanging outside of my punch. Give it a punch. And I now have a tag. So I took my essentials tag punch and I took it from something very small to something large. Now, what happens if we need to reverse that? Let me show you my next tip. So here I just stamped wishing you were here. I'm gonna take my rectangle postage punch. And what I wanna do here is I'm going to put that into my punch as far as it'll go. You notice I have a lot of space over here. Not a problem. We're going to line that up. Let's give it a punch. Well, like I said, I need to take this end off. But if I were to just stick this in here, yeah, it's not going to work. The, the image will be going the wrong way. So just like we did before, we're going to take that punch and we're going to slide it through. Now with the rectangle postage punch, it's great because it hits those little grooves in the little postage area. So it sets itself up just right. So get that right where it needs to be. I'm gonna lift it up. Can you see I'm lifting it up so that it's just gonna hit that end and boom, we now have a square from our rectangle punch. That same method is true with the bottle punch. You can make it big, you can make it small, lengthen it, shorten it, whatever you need to do. But here's the problem with this one. It's gonna have that harsh edge at the bottom. This is one of my favorite tips. I'm kind of calling it my bonus tip. Did you know you could take a nail file and just file the edges of that cardstock? See how it's, it's kind of a harsh edge, but with a quick little swoop of a nail file, it's good to go. Yeah, that's a great way to take a punch like the bottle punch. I can still use it but it might need a little TLC nail file. That's all you need. Little bonus there. I have another tip that kind of goes along with this. So I've got my label me fancy punch. And just like I just taught you how to do, if we take our piece of card, so, and by the way, in this punch, it's a one and an eighth inch. Again, lifting it up, kind of out of the punch so I get just the one end. Rotate it around, put that punched end inside, slide it all the way out. Give it another punch. Okay, that's awesome. But look at what this punch has. We have a little circle for maybe some baker's twine, or we have a ribbon slot. So I want to show you really quick how I get those perfectly straight. All right, so here's the scrap that came off of my punch, right? I'm going to give that a little fold. I love to use everything that I use. It just makes sense. I'm going to set that right here. So I see my little center point and I'm going to give myself a dot. Okay. Now on this other side, let me go ahead and rotate it around. So this one is what you're going to do if you're using that slot. So I'm going to just kind of center that up. There's that center line. Can you see? There's my little fold line, but that allows me to use that scrap. So now again, we're going to turn our punch over. I can see that dot. 
So when we give it a punch, perfection. And now for that little ribbon slot, we can line that up. This is why I love to use my punches upside down. And here's the thing, I don't have to worry about that little line. Why? Because I punched it out. So now I'm all set. I can run ribbon through there. Baker's twine, linen thread, any of those will work too. There we go. Great, easy way to create yourself a fabulous punch. This can be any size you want. And we have two different options of what kind of um, uh, ribbon or embellishment here that we want to use on our tag. Love this punch. Have you ever had this dilemma? You created yourself a little punch. Maybe it's a label or something and you go, that's great, but boy, it just needs something, right? You want to have a nice border around it, but you only have one punch. Here's what you're going to do. So I punched out two more additional um, labels here, and this is one of my favorite tricks. You are going to cut one short ways and one long ways, and we're going to use these as backgrounds. But before I do, do you see how we're getting a little bit of that edge? So here's what I like to do. I'm going to take this little point, and we're just going to put our scissors right in there, and we're going to trim that away. This actually goes very, very fast. The same is going to be true here on this end, because when I stretch it, do you see all that bulk that's showing? Yeah, we don't want that. So not a problem. We just trim it away. There's really not a right and wrong. It's all going to work. So let me clean up my mess. Now I will show you how we're going to put this together. It doesn't matter what end you start with. I'm going to go ahead and start the long one. So I put my adhesive there. I'm going to take that long strip and look at this. I'm just going to decide how much of a border do I want. That looks good. Now I'll take my other side. And guys, I actually could leave it just like that. It, it does look nice and it has kind of stretched it. Look at the back. Ugly, right? Let's add our adhesive here on the sides. And now we can stretch that too. And we'll add this one right here. And voila, we now have created a border from just one punch. Easy, easy. Did you know that any of your punches also make an instant stencil? It's true. Watch what I'm going to do. I've got just a piece of black cardstock, and I'm going to take our cloud punch, and I'm going to punch a black cloud. That's not good. We don't like black clouds, but you know what we do love? We love pretty blue clouds. So I'm going to take a balmy blue ink pad, and I'm going to take a blending brush. I always like to pull just a little bit of the color off before I start. I'm going to lay my stencil right here. And I'm just going to blend that right over that black cardstock. Boom, I've got a cloud. Now, let's do it again. But, ooh, we're going to flip it over so the cloud is a little bit different shape. And for this one, I'm going to go even a little bit lighter, just, you know, so we can change it up. You know, not all clouds are created equal. So we'll sponge that right there. And there we go, another cloud. Blend, blend, blend. And you get to reuse this stencil over and over again. Fabulous. And by the way, this works with any of your punches, right? Any of them are going to work. I just thought I would show you how fun it is to create your own clouds with the stencil. Now, of course, we can always punch out white clouds. That's gorgeous, right? But this is really a fun way to add a nice softness to a card. Hey, don't forget about that free download that I have for you. I know it's hard to remember all the tips and this download's going to make it easy. You can look down in the YouTube description or just go to simplysimplestamping.com and you'll find my post there. Hey, while you're there, you can order there too. Uh, if you need to get any of those fabulous punches, I would love to be your Stampin' Up! demonstrator. Okay, friends, I've got a few more tricks and tips up my sleeve, so let's continue. I love adding ribbon to a card, but many times I have issues getting it straight. So I've got a really fun way that you can use your punches to create ribbon notches. So here's my example. I want to put this piece of ribbon right here, but I don't want to adhere it down. I just kind of want to use maybe just a piece of it. And I want that to stay in place. But boy, if you have a hard time getting that, I don't know where it goes. Check out this tip. You can use a lot of different things. I'm actually going to bring in the bottle punch. 
I'm going to take a little piece of scrap just to get myself kind of a little template there. I'm going to lay that on the edge of my cardstock, and I'm just going to find the center there. I'm going to bring this one over here. By the way, you notice I'm using just the edge of the, the bottle punch as my guide. That way I get that centered. So there are my notches. I'm sure they're straight. Now I'm going to come in here with that bottle punch. And can you see there are some little, little notches right there? And that's going to allow me to see what I'm going to line up here. And if you want to go a little bit further, you can. So little punch. We're going to flip it around. I'm just centering it up again. I'm going to put a little adhesive here, a little adhesive here. I'm going to take some ribbon and look how it fits perfect inside this notch. Here's the thing. It's not just about holding the ribbon. It's really it kind of just gives it a really cute look too. So once we have that, you can take that leftover ribbon and we can just tie this here in a bow. I'm going to adhere this with some stamp dimensionals. And you know what? I'm going to let those dimensionals kind of hold that ribbon just to be sure it's good and secure. Of course, stamp and dimensionals are totally optional because you can just use your adhesive. But look at the fun little ribbon notch. This works great. I actually use this tip all the time, but it goes beyond this certain punch. There's a lot that you could use. There are more punches that will accomplish that, though. Let's talk about some of these other ones. Uh, here, let me try my ticket punch. And with this one, I can, you know what, we're going to do it on this side. So I could create a little notch there and a little notch here. And that's going to be just right for any of the three eighths inch ribbon. Looks really cute, doesn't it? Okay, ticket punch, daisy punch. Say what? Yes, look what we're going to do here. We're just going to take a little nip right there, flip it around. Now I'm not measuring and you will want to make sure that you give yourself a little tick mark, but what can we do with that? Yep, this is great when you have that, those little one eighth inch uh, pieces of ribbon. And I love these in color sparkle, sparkle ribbons, but it is awfully nice when you're trying to tie a bow, when you have those notches, your ribbon just kind of stays in place. Notches are great for bows for knots, whatever you're working on. And the best part about that, it's not gonna fall off and it's gonna stay right in place. I've got another fun one. I'm gonna use that cardstock that I just did my stencil on. Let's make ourselves a couple little tick marks. Remember, we're gonna be cutting them off. So there's that little circle part of my essentials tag. I'm gonna bring that in. Now, can you see? I can see right where my, um, my little tick mark is, and we're gonna get that. Let's rotate it around, and we're gonna do that here on the other side. You wanna make sure you're removing all of your, of your tick mark. There we go. Now check out what I'm gonna do. A little adhesive here and here, and this is going to allow me a double thing of ribbon. So I'll just press that right there. There's a notch, there's a notch. I'll adhere it on the back. It's not going anywhere, and I've got it perfectly straight. And, of course, if I just want to take some more of my ribbon, I can tie it in a bow right here. This is a really cute look. And, by the way, this is also going to work great with baker's twine. So baker's twine or this gorgeous little one eighth inch uh, ribbon. So cute. And don't you love the notch just gives it of that little extra. I'm going to share with you my fun way of how to create your own ticket look. And we're going to do that with the cloud punch. Here we go. We're going to do like we have already. And we're going to make ourselves our little tick mark, making sure that we can kind of get everything good and straight. There's a lot of circles going on on this punch. So you can just pick your favorite one. I am going to center that up right here in that edge. Boom. I have just made a ticket punch. Yes, I have. We'll do that right here. Boom, ticket punch, quick and easy. Now, how about using your punches to create leaves to go on any of your flowers? Check this out. I've got my dragonflies punch. This one is great. I'm just going to come 
all the way down to there. Not very attractive, right? But look at this. When we add it to like our daisy punch, it's a great set of leaves. So don't forget your dragonfly can do more than that. I've got another one. The ladybug builder has wings, but you know what? They're also great leaves for my flower. Then of course we always have our flower and leaves and there's two leaves in this one as well. So that's You know, we use the heart uh, punch pack quite a bit because you know, hearts go with a lot of different things, but I'm gonna show you how you're gonna use your heart punches to create a fabulous scallop border. So I've just got some black cardstock here and I'm just gonna punch out, you notice I'm not even getting the whole heart, just part of it, but I figure I can kind of conserve my cardstock that way. There's no right or wrong here, just get yourself some of these little half heart punches. I'm now gonna add these to my card. So I'm gonna do a strip of adhesive. Imperfection is not the goal here, but I'm gonna kind of try to start right there in the middle. Then I can take my next scallop, Add it right there. Don't worry about that yet. We're not there. We'll take care of that here in just a second. Line that up. Look at that. I can come in with my uh, paper trimmer. I can trim away the extra. And look at that. I have got a gorgeous little scallop. And if you prefer scallopy scallops, well, use your scallop heart punch. I just think this is a great look on a card. Quick, easy, and a wonderful way to use up some scraps. My last tip is really about helping you see your punches beyond what they are. So I have the um, Songbird Builder punch here, and it's a sweet little punch, but I looked at that, and I looked at both of those, and I said, hmm, that kind of looks like a birthday candle. So I'm going to bring in some Mango Melody cardstock, and I'm going to give that one a punch. That's perfect for a small candle, but if I wanted to make a bigger candle, I could do this. And I took those and I just took some scraps of some cardstock and boom, I made a candle. But I wanted to share one little tip. This is kind of like my little bonus tip and it goes beyond just what I'm gonna do here. So this wing had a little bit of a sharp point on it. Now I'm gonna be honest, I'm not really good at like trying to clip that away and making it look smooth. So here is one of my tips for things like that and it's just a nail file, just file that card stock down is really easy and it's really quick and boom I now have there is my flame just strips of card stock and I drew a little line birthday wishes boom 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 I didn't have a candle stamp but you know what I sure do now thank you so much for being with me today if you like the video I would love a thumbs up on YouTube and hey if you haven't subscribed it's a great day to be a subscriber that great big red subscribe button is waiting for you to go click and uh, we will let you know, YouTube will let you know whenever I'm back with a new video. So I hope you'll join us. Have a fabulous day, everybody. Can't wait to see you next time. Bye-bye.